So really clean play here on Microsoft this afternoon. Powell spoke uh, over that lunchtime period, and then we kind of got a bullish fake out higher, which invalidate last, invalidated last week's volume. And then we had a nice high volume breakdown. Uh, the idea here was basically that we would get some continuation back down towards sort of low of day and was looking for sort of that inside bar breakdown continuation move here. Might be getting a good risk reward look here on Microsoft, right? Uh, inside bar. I mean, it looks like one. I can't see why it isn't giving me that alert. It doesn't look like it made a lower low, right? Low vol pullback, right? You're getting a good risk reward towards that sort of lower day. You've had that trend reversal now, right? You've had that confirmation breakdown. Goes up to go down and go down to go up. Yeah. Seems like it gives you the fake out before it moves in the direction that it wants. So I would say this Microsoft definitely looks interesting. Right, your target would be low of day here. So let's see if we can get a decent pullback into this area. It would be looking... Probably the 260.25 puts or the 260 puts. Both look pretty reasonable. I'm going to be playing this with shares. Stop loss here is about 60 cents, right? For a $3 risk or $3 reward. Or is VWAP here? Yeah, pretty much, right? So now let's, I think that's a really good shout there, T Crone, right? So let's see if I hate these um, fucking bands. So we get that little tennis ball reaction here, right? This would be the spot. Stop loss, 263.75. So there's that possible overreaction. So entry logic here became if I saw a seller step in and defending VWAP. If that then happened under my stop loss, I was happy to get an entry. All right, so let's see if this thing has some juice for us. Uh, I am in average price, 263.37, 263.37. So then I basically looked to enter in once I saw that wall of rejection just above that VWAP. So ended up having about 20 cents worth of risk on this play and was pretty much green right away. Okay, let's see if this thing can go. That VWAP shout was pretty much perfect, he grown pretty much perfect. So I'm gonna look to trim a little bit of my position here. All right, buying some at uh, 263, closing off about a tenth of my original position. Now stop loss on my remainder is going to be, call it just above VWAP, right? So we'll call it entry price. So I locked in a little bit of profit here. Let's see if this thing can keep going. So pretty much immediately was green on this play here. And then my objective switched from trying to get a move all the way down towards sort of that 260 barrier towards having sort of that risk-free trade. So it closed one tenth of my position. Locked in some profit and made it impossible to lose on this play. Now I had zero risk and a stress-free play. I love when you find a little point of confluence like this. And uh, I, I kind of feel good to get some revenge on from Microsoft last week. <laughs> Let's go. All right, I'm going to take off a little bit more here. Okay, there we go. Took some off at 262.60.
So I locked in profit right at 1R, essentially when I had a 30 cent move away from my entry price, and then locked in more when I had 2R move, right? 60 cents away from my entry price. So let's see if this thing now can really flush lower. Well, that was pretty sick. Nice work, guys. Hopefully a few of you guys caught this as well. Pretty stress-free trade, good patience, got a setup trigger, fake out higher, MA reversal, big volume on that breakdown, little inside bar pullback. And now breaking down nicely. Maybe we want to see a little bit more volume on this candle here, right? I would say probably want to see a little bit more volume there. But now at like 1.5R, right? So not too shabby, all things considered. Once the volume didn't really step in on that breakdown, it kind of invalidated my thesis to a certain extent, right? I expected to see strong bears and I didn't see that in the volume. Let's see if this thing has legs towards low of day. Nice, Michael. Nice. Love that. The reason I'm willing to stay in this trade is because I'm at that risk free. I'm protecting my entry. I've locked in profit. I've got nothing to lose. All right? Similar. Like, they're all very correlated names, right? So similar setups are going to give you similar triggers. I mean, it's pretty much the exact same setup. The only difference is that Microsoft gave us an inside bar, whereas this didn't. But at that point, I'm I'm kind of um, like I'm I'm picking very fine details. All right, the trade's turning out really well here, guys. Right, so next profit target's gonna be a low. Uh, through this, say, 260, 180. I'm going to take a little bit more off, and then I'll have about 70% of my original position. Bought 10 lots here, right? 100 or 1,000 shares. Went short 1,000 shares. Total risk was uh, about 600 bucks. A bit less. All right, take a little bit more off here. Okay, locking some in. I've got some off. Come on. Oh. Okay, there we go. Close them off at 261.90. 261.90. Let's see if this thing can keep going. But insurance for that low of daybreak, taking off 30% of my pot, my um my position, chilling here. Oh, uh, sorry to hear that, T Crone. I'm sorry, man. So let's talk about what um what your entry process was, right? Essentially. Yeah, KC okay, so not having to deal with that decay right now, I think is actually a pretty big advantage. And if you can get, uh, this is approximately 50% the exposure I would have had with like uh, options, right? Usually doing about 50K a position in options, something like that. So here at approximately like 20K worth of options, it would have been 20K worth of options. But really smooth, minimal slippage, clean process. Nice little payout. My thesis, to be very honest with you, is that I actually will make money, more money trading shares than I will trading options if I can trade the same equivalent size. Uh, okay, that's a bit unlucky. So the reason I say that, right, is because my average loss is going to be a lot smaller playing shares than it's playing with options. So I'll lose 500 bucks on this play instead of 5,000. All right, so this trade's now almost uh, 3R, right? That's pretty sick. Congratulations, everybody. Let's see if this thing can keep breaking down here. But uh, I got no reason to be greedy. Pretty tidy little play. I mean, if you're in options, you're probably crushing it here. I don't understand what the setup was.
<laughs> yeah, we played uh, Microsoft here to the downside, Copeland. Oh, well done, KC. Catching 5R in this uh, morning chop is really impressive. Still not the greatest volume on this continuation breakdown. That's probably the only thing that's giving me a little bit of hesitation, but it keeps moving in my favor. So I got no reason to sell here. All right, stop loss. I mean, we're like two bucks away from entry price. So pretty much textbook little win. <laughs> Man, I was so frustrated this morning. And then sit back on the desk and then... Um, right away just like find that that nice trade um i would i'd be careful because we've seen that fake out here now so i would say a little bit cautious on that if you could get a pullback maybe into closer towards that 200 that would be more of an interesting area but i, I hate the fake out right failed breakout almost uh, cheers, Rusty. Yeah, a bit of a weird time it came together, but really nice little setup. Played the, oh, I personally played this with shares, not options as well. A little bit different than normal. But, um, <laughs> but it felt really calm. Felt really, really calm. So stop loss here is still at my entry price, right? A little bit of consolidation. Yeah, the, the fake out's not bad, but I wish it was on a little bit more volume, right? Or say these uh, breakdown cents, right? Like this is basically our entry candle, right? Same candle we got on Microsoft, right? Same one on, on SPY, but I just wish that there was a little bit more oomph to these because it's not necessarily telling me that I'm going to get super easy follow through here. So yeah, pretty stoked I noticed that it was thin volume during the kind of session, right? I didn't kind of trick myself into holding this for much longer or you know, tricking myself into doing something silly here. That lack of volume on that breakdown, not the most consistent narrative. Lack of consistent narrative means lack of easy follow through. So let's see, see how much juice it has. Maybe it's like a little bit of a wedge pattern. We ignore this wick, right? Kind of found a little bit of a trend line here and then maybe a little bit of a trend line here break out of that consolidation could be that next leg down that was a fun little play well done everybody well done <laughs> just cracks me up right the um <laughs> basically like the worst Worst market conditions, you know, one could expect. And then we get a trade over lunchtime or like, you know, 10 minutes after coming back from lunch. It's like worst possible conditions. And it's the first time I've had a trade over lunch in like maybe a year and a half. <laughs> this, this game surprises me every single day. Um, So what I do um, is I'm kind of doing a little bit of both to be to be perfectly honest with you. Once price breaks through into my entry zone, I'm setting my price as that. And then I'm waiting for a pullback, uh, basically find that right tennis ball reaction. Once I get that tennis ball reaction, I click submit and my broker has the sort of right or has the obligation, we should call it fiduciary duty to give me the best, best execution price as possible. So I'm basically setting uh, a market order that I'm willing to accept anything less than 263.16 in this context. But it basically then behaves like a market order. So it's going to fill me up. Um, yeah, it's going to give me a fill right away. But it's not going to give me a fill worse than 263.14. Oh, I'm sorry, Jason. Sounds good, Copeland. We'll see you in the, uh, in the morning tomorrow, man. Glad you caught a little bit of that spy.
Oh, sorry, that was Michael. Apologies, Copeland. Casey, what made you say um, uh, that you think Nvidia was interesting for uh, to buy buy the dip here? Pretty much, what made you say that? Okay, so you, you basically just uh, think you found like some support to, to kind of trend off of and then you're looking for that sort of kind of relief bounce almost. So still in this Microsoft, right? Stop loss is that entry price. Yeah, fair. So you're you're playing uh I mean it makes sense. If you have a longer term bias, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Seems like you get a decent amount of action with that too, which is pretty nice. But my feeling to a certain extent right is with the the kind of violence of that uh fake out right or that red to green reversal it, it has to take a pretty significant volume standard for bulls to reclaim control that would be my main hesitation just want to make sure that you know bears still don't really have the sort of uh, upper hand to a certain extent Like, I understand the, the thesis, understand the logic, but just, yeah, want to not, uh, like, uh, under context, it's, I think you need, you need to be careful with what you look for as confirmation. <laughs> just uh kind of thinking this to myself a little bit right um when i lived in england i had some uh we'll call it bad health habits <laughs> the generous way of describing it of sort of the the quality of life that i created for myself there but i was just thinking that after like a slow day like today uh you know you finally catch a trade in the afternoon all I would want or all I would be doing right now is sitting down at a, a bar or at a coffee shop having either a beer or a coffee and a cigarette <laughs> and uh all this trade has made me want to do is go have a smoke <laughs> just made me miss smoking for a second there but instead I'm gonna have a kombucha and uh look at my dog who's being all cute and stuff instead of smoking but <laughs> it made me miss cigarettes for the first time in a long time.
Uh, he's War Satan. Or Solid Gas, sorry. All right, I'm probably going to look to stop myself out here in a sec, protect the rest of my position. But pretty tidy little play. We'll never complain about that. Oh, still in. Hmm. Almost. <laughs> Welcome back, Copeland. <laughs> That's the beautiful thing of it being on YouTube, right? You can kind of access it anywhere. <laughs> it does seem like that, T-Cron. We're just going to get back up to high a day now all of a sudden. All right, well, I'm going to close my uh, Microsoft position here in a sec. All right, I am out. All right, nice little play. I'll take that all day long. Well done, KC. Well done, man. That's awesome. All right, sick little trade. I'll take that all day long. Man, it feels so good to be patient. Ah, um, all I trade is Spy, QQQ, Apple, Tesla, Microsoft, AMD, NVIDIA, Meta, Amazon. <laughs> 